Module 7, Chapter 4.1, Rational Functions and Graphs. A rational expression is a fraction that is the quotient of two polynomials. We often refer to these as an algebraic fraction. A function defined by a rational expression is called a rational function. A rational function f of x is the quotient of two polynomials p of x and q of x with q of x not equal to zero. A couple of examples would just be the function 1 over x or something like f of x equals x plus 1 over 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Remember, the domain of a function consists of all x values for which the function is defined. That is, the domain does not include any value or values that make the denominator equal to zero. The graph of a rational function often has a discontinuous graph, which means it's a graph that has one or more breaks in it. We're not going to be able to draw it without picking up our pencil. Now, the reciprocal function, f of x equals 1 over x, is the simplest rational function. Now, to graph this, consider the following tables. If we plug in x is negative 1, we get negative 1. If we plug in x is negative 0.1, we get negative 10 all the way up to if we plug in x is negative point zero 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 one, then we get x is negative 10 million. So actually, as these x values get closer to zero, the y values are taken off to negative infinity very, very, very rapidly. Okay, and the way we phrase this in algebra terms is as x approaches zero from the left, 1 over x approaches negative infinity, meaning as the x's get closer to 0, the y values get further from 0. Okay, add a new part of our table. Now let's do the positive ones, 1.1.01. If you notice, as these x values get closer to 0, these y values get larger and larger. Okay, so as we get closer to zero from the right, this function approaches positive infinity. Now let's pick some more tables on the graph. Let's pick the positive x values, 1, 10, 100, 1,000, and so forth. As the x values get larger and larger and larger, the, y, the function values or the y values are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Will it ever hit zero? No, but it's getting closer and closer to zero. So we say as x approaches infinity, as your x's get larger, then the function values get smaller, and but they will never reach zero. One more piece of the graph. For x values negative 1, negative 10, negative 100, and so forth, as the x values get smaller, or as the x values approach negative infinity, the y values will get closer and closer and closer to zero, although it's never going to touch. So, your reciprocal function, f of x equals 1 over x, will have a vertical asymptote. That is an imaginary vertical line that the graph will never cross. Let's back up. You notice the graph never touches this y inner, I mean this y axis. This means we would have a vertical asymptote of x equals zero. Okay, a horizontal asymptote is an imaginary horizontal line that the graph usually never causes. Occasionally it will. As a note, the graph will get closer and closer to the vertical asymptote, but never cross it. However, the graph may cross 
the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so for the function f of x equals 1 over x, domain goes from negative infinity to 0, and then it goes from 0 to infinity. It cannot be 0 because if x was 0, then this function would be undefined. The range, same thing, we've got y values going up here almost to 0. They almost hit 0 here, and then they take off to infinity. So the range is also from negative infinity to 0, union with 0 to infinity. Now, it's decreasing on the interval as you're coming from left to right. These are all decreasing. So it decreases from negative infinity to 0. Now these, even though they're way up here, and even though it looks like this graph is going up, as you're coming from left to right, the y values are getting smaller, so it's decreasing also from 0 to infinity. Now, it's discontinuous at 0 because 0 was not in the domain. Now, the vertical asymptote is x equals 0. Your horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And we say that this graph is symmetric with respect to the origin, which makes it an odd function. Because remember, if you did a line right up through the middle and you folded, you'd get exactly the same on both sides. Now, let's graph a rational function. Well, if we wanted to graph f of x equals 2 over x plus 1, we could rewrite that as 2 times 1 over x plus 1. Now, this goes back to the shifting and stretching and all that we did earlier. This x plus 1 means we're going to shift it to the left one place, and the 2 out front means we're going to stretch it vertically by a factor of 2. So if we take our little graph that we had earlier, and basically by shifting it, we're just moving the original x and y axis over one place, and then stretch it so our graph would look like this, which we could just punch it in our calculator. The domain in this case would be from negative infinity to negative 1, union with negative 1 to infinity. The vertical asymptote becomes the x equals negative 1. That's the point that makes it undefined. And the horizontal asymptote remains y equals 0. So to do this one on our calculator, we're going to go y equals 2 divided by and remember, anytime we're doing fractions on our calculator, it's probably a good idea to put your parentheses on there. Let's go back to our zoom 6, and that's what our graph looks like. Now notice we're in a connected mode, so it connects this lowest value with this upper value. But just know that that vertical line is technically not part of your original graph. So if we wanted to graph f of x equals 2 over x, if you'll recall, that's the same as 2 times 1 over x. So we're going to do the same function that we just had, but we're going to stretch it by a factor of 2. And we could do that one on our calculator also. Now, just to see the difference between the two, let's do 1 over x for the first one. And then let's do 2 over x for the second one. And I'm going to go back up here on this first one and change it to a little bit bolder line so we can tell the difference. So when we graph it, there's the bold ones. And there's the second one. Notice they're pretty much the same. They're maybe a little bit steeper, but that's it. What about that one? 1 over x plus 2. Well, this plus 2 basically just means we are shifting our graph up two places. So what we're basically doing is moving our old x-intercept over, I mean the origin over, so that graph would come this way down here, then it would start here and come over this way, and that's what we would do on our graph. 
Now, let's talk about a new rational function, f of x equals 1 over x squared. The domain is negative infinity to 0, union with 0 to infinity, because you cannot have the denominator equal in 0, which x equals 0 would do that. Now, when you plug in points on this one, if you plug in x is negative, it's going to square it, which makes it positive. Therefore, all of the range values are going to be above the x-axis. And in this case, we say it's increasing for the first side of the graph, and then it's decreasing for the second side of the graph. Now, it's discontinuous at x equals 0 because that's not included in the domain. The vertical asymptote is x equals 0. The horizontal asymptote is y equals 0. And this one we say is symmetric with respect to the y-axis because if you folded it along the y-axis, then you would get the same graph. So if we wanted to graph y equals 1 over x plus 2 squared minus 1, what we're thinking is this is the graph. It's similar to the graph 1 over x squared. Well, because this is x plus 2 squared, we're going to shift it back or to the left two units. The number on the end is our vertical shift, so we're going to shift it down one unit. So what we do is we go on our regular x and y axis, we go back two down one, and then we copy over our new x, y axis, and then we draw in the 1 over x squared graph from there. The domain is from negative infinity to negative 2, union with negative 2 to infinity. The vertical asymptote is the x equals negative 2. That's always the line where it's going to be undefined. And the horizontal asymptote is negative 1. To do this one on our calculator, y equals 1 divided by, then we're going to do in parentheses, x plus 2 squared minus 1. Graph, there comes our picture, there comes our picture, and we're good. Okay, to graph this one, remember the negative 1 means your graph normally goes upside down. So we're still looking at 1 over x squared, that shape that goes like this. The negative x minus 3 means we're going to shift it to the right three places. Shift it to the right, 1, 2, 3. So basically we're bringing our origin this way. But because it's a negative, it shifts. So this one's going to come this way, and this one's going to come this way, and if we wanted to check it on our calculator, we'd say y equals negative 1 divided by, then in parentheses, x minus 3 squared. And when we press graph, we get our graph that looks like this. Now, you're ready to complete this section of homework on my math lab.